May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and reflections of all our hearts be inspired by the Spirit of God. Amen. Come and see. I love it when our grandson says, come and see, Nanny, as we excitedly go together to look at whatever his six-year-old creative genius has imagined with a cardboard box and some masking tape. Instead of come and see, his little brother says, show you, Nanny, and we walk together to see the flower or the insect or the leaf that has inspired awe and wonder in his two-year-old imagination. On New Year's Day, we were visiting a beachside apartment and across the water, right in front of us, so close that we could almost reach our hands out and touch it, I saw the most spectacular rainbow I ever remember seeing. Perhaps some of you are at the beach on New Year's Day and saw that same rainbow. It was unbelievable. Come and see, everyone was calling to one another. Come and see is a joint venture. However, at the same time, everyone sees through their own eyes, from their own particular perspective of time and space, of capacity and engagement. Last week, Dale challenged us to consider what's new and what needs renewing. Perspective, hope. Finding new perspective is a way forward when we feel stuck. We all feel stuck at times. It's a human thing that happens. Finding new perspective, though, is an invitation to come and see what might be possible. In our reading, Jesus has just invited Philip to follow him. Philip then goes to Nathanael and says, guess what? We have just found the one who is the fulfillment of all the law and prophets, everything that has been written. Jesus of Nazareth. When Nathanael says, really? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I'm hearing someone who may be stuck. Do you? Maybe stuck in small town thinking. Nathanael was from Cana, and it wouldn't have been uncommon for there to be rivalry between two villages like Cana and Nazareth. Or perhaps stuck simply in the ho-hum of everyday life or stuck because sometimes something amazing sounds just too good to be true. Before we explore Nathaniel's response in today's reading, let's back up a few verses where we find some interesting things that will help us to better understand this rather odd story about Jesus, really. All the names that are given to him, a fig tree, an eclectic group of men, and angels going up and down on someone called the Son of Man. The phrase come and see occurs four times in John's Gospel and twice in the first chapter. Then in chapter four we meet a woman, the woman of Samaria, the woman at the well. The one to whom Jesus says, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but the, those who drink of the water I give them will never be thirsty. The woman leaves her water jar, returns to the city, and says to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I've ever done. He can't be the Messiah, can he? In John chapter 11, Jesus receives the news that his friend Lazarus has died. Jesus meets Mary, the sister of Lazarus, on the road on the way to their home. Mary and the people with her are weeping, and Jesus says, where have you laid him? The reply, Lord, come and see, at which Jesus begins to weep with them and goes to the body of Lazarus. Returning to chapter one and the verses just prior to today's reading, John the Baptist is with two of his disciples. They see Jesus walk by and John the Baptist says, look, here is the Lamb of God at which those two disciples leave John and choose to follow Jesus. Then Jesus turns and asks them, what are you looking for? They answer with another question, where are you staying? And Jesus says to them, come and see. 
Jesus invites them to come with him to where he is going and to see what they see. After spending time with Jesus, one of these disciples, Andrew, goes and tells his brother, Peter, the fisherman, we have found the Messiah, the anointed one. We then pick up today's reading with Jesus going to the region of Galilee, finding Philip and saying, follow me. Philip does follow, and then he finds Nathanael, who asks regarding Jesus, son of Joseph, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can you think of a time when you were stuck and you perhaps asked, can anything good come out of my hometown, out of the hometown of the one who is my rival? Can anything good come from my life or my family or from the life of that other person? It's hard work, isn't it, to see the light when we become overwhelmed by darkness and feel helpless or hopeless or stuck. We can't be sure of what prompted Nathaniel's question. We can't even be sure of who Nathaniel was because there's no other mention of Nathaniel in the Gospels other than briefly in John 21 after Jesus' resurrection. Yet his question resonates with us. It's almost as though Nathaniel is Australian. Really? Can anything good come out of wherever? Pick your place. We can get stuck when our perspective comes becomes focused on what's wrong with others or wrong with our situation or experience as painful or difficult or mundane as they might be. We can get stuck when our prayer becomes that the other person or the people who we think are making life difficult for us change so that we can move on. Someone very wise that um, I was leading leading small groups with some years ago encouraged me and the other group leaders to take a different perspective when we felt like this. He suggested that we pray the well-known serenity prayer like this. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know that that's me. When we meet Jesus, his invitation is always to come and see, to see what's possible when we walk with him alongside us. Jesus sheds new light, making new perspectives and new ways of seeing ourselves and others possible. Our What's New With You video includes a wonderful challenge. We are invited to join with God in the sacred work of making all things new. A word of caution though, when as Christians we sing or say the old life has gone, the new has begun, which is very scriptural, it's also very easy to devalue the sum total of our lives, which includes the high points as well as the lows, the failures along with the successes, and joy along with the sorrow. When we accept the invitation to follow Jesus and to live, As Christians, our wholeness doesn't come from denying the reality of the whole of our life, including our past life. That could be more damaging than healing. The restoration or change of perspective that Jesus makes possible enables us to see that everything in our lives can belong, while at the same time we can be free from the influences of our past that are not life-giving. The process of repentance or saying sorry and being forgiven redeems that which has been lost. Our dignity, our self-worth, our joy, our sense of meaning and purpose. The new perspective, the new life that Jesus offers is that we can live life to the full no matter what our story might be. We can be made whole. That's the story of the disciples who follow Jesus and of the woman at the well and it can be our story too. Do you remember last week we met Claudia the butterfly in the children's story? Claudia's dream was to fly, but she felt stuck as a caterpillar until she was enclosed in the dark for a time so that she could develop in ways that would enable her to fly. Claudia could only be a butterfly because she was first Claudia the caterpillar. 
Peter developed the gifts he needed to fulfill the task that Jesus gave him to be the rock upon which the church would be built by first being a fisherman. Nathaniel became unstuck when he responded to Philip's invitation to come and to see. When Jesus saw Nathaniel, he said, here is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Now that might sound odd to us, but this is a greeting that any devout Jewish person would recognize. If you were walking towards Jesus, if he saw you coming, what might his words be to you? Maybe something like, here is a really genuine person, person trying to do the best that they can with their life here and now. What was the catalyst for Nathaniel's change of perspective? Because there was a really big change of perspective. It was that Jesus knew him, just as it was for the woman at the well. What is it like for you to know that Jesus truly knows you and loves you and accepts you? Perhaps it's both terrifying as well as comforting that the God of the universe invites you into the community of love established by Jesus where you are fully known and fully accepted. Jesus saw Nathanael under the fig tree before Philip called him. Some of the Old Testament prophets used the fig tree as an analogy for Israel. It was often paired with the grapevine as a symbol of prosperity and peace. And the fig tree also provided shade and the heat of the day, somewhere that you could go and rest and meditate on God's word. When Nathanael says to Jesus, Rabbi, teacher, you are the son of God, the king of Israel, he is saying, you're the one who understands the deepest thoughts of my heart and the longings of my life. You understand my heart without the need to put things into words. John's reference to angels of God ascending and descending refers to an iconic story in the very early part of the Old Testament. Jacob, whose name became Israel, was one of the patriarchs of the Jewish people. In Genesis 28, Jacob dreamt, dreamt that a ladder was set up on the earth and the top reaching to heaven, which in those days people understood as the sky. Angels of God were ascending and descending the ladder. And the Lord stood beside Jacob and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. God makes a promise to give the land on which Jacob is lying to him and to his offspring. Jacob's dream confirmed Israel's place in the story of God's people. Nathaniel, as an Israelite, would recognize that he too now had a place in the story of God's people as a follower of Jesus, the one who was the fulfillment of God's provision for God's people. Come and see Jesus and follow. This is the call on our lives that will lead us into the fullness of life that our hearts so much desire. Christians can easily become preoccupied with go and tell, go and tell. While Jesus encourages his followers to go and tell, invariably, it's about what they've seen and heard and experienced in their life of living with Jesus. The come and see approach avoids the trap of dogma and arguments. As I discovered while journeying with students for the last nine years, we can't argue people into relationship with Jesus any more than we can argue someone into becoming our friend. All we can do is say, I know Jesus, will you come and see? And ensure that when we do invite people to come and see, that what they see is people who are helping each other, loving each other, caring for those beyond our comfortable community, working for justice and respecting and valuing one another's stories, no matter who they are. Today's reading reminds us that living as a follower of Jesus is not a solo adventure. Following Christ, living as a Christian is always about relationship with ourselves through seeking wholeness in God's redemptive love, relationship with others through the gift of grace and forgiveness, relationship with God 
through the promise of God's never giving up, never ending faithful love made visible in the life, death and resurrection of Christ. And sometimes it's the physical world around us that invites us to come and see like that absolutely amazing rainbow. Living as followers of Christ invites us into relationship with our physical world to live as the custodians of creation so that all who call the earth their home might live in peace and justice. So as we journey with one another into another week of a year that is still brimming with opportunity, will you come and see, along with me, Jesus and the life that he makes possible? Amen.